we came out um, on the creek today to do a little bit of fishing, um, but that wasn't really the main objective, even though we did get some nice ones. Uh, but what we're gonna do today is we've gathered up a bunch of berries. We've got elderberries and blackberries, and then we have a whole bunch of huckleberries from last year that I forgot about that were in the freezer. They taste great. We used them in uh, some pancakes the other day. And so now we're gonna make uh, a tri-berry jam. We're gonna do it in a canoe. Yeah, so this is uh, jam making, hillbilly style, in a canoe. Stick with us. Because why wouldn't we make jam in a canoe? It seems perfectly not safe at all, actually. Don't ever try this at home. <laughs> Very calm water here, but if we were moving at all, you risk getting scalded with jam. It's probably a terrible idea. Here. All right, so we're just cooking it down. We're gonna kind of like convert some of the sugars here so it'll get a little sweeter. Um, typically, elderberries are not known for being particularly sweet, but blackberries get a lot of really good sweet flavor. And once this gets cooked down, and we kind of release the juice from the pulp, then we're gonna run it through the colander. And then we will add the huckleberry, and we'll cook that down. That way we've got some huckleberry pulp in our jam. Ooh, God, that already smells so good. So my brother made this very jam um, a couple years ago and sent some home with us, I think for Christmas or something like that and we were just astounded at how good it was. Um, the blackberry, you know, everybody knows what a blackberry tastes like. They're fantastic. The elderberry doesn't have the most amazing flavor on its own, but what it lacks in flavor, it makes up in bulk. So we picked like one little cluster of elderberry and got all the berries that you saw in here earlier. And there was probably like 300 or 400 more clusters of the same size on that one tree. Look at all those berries. So they really do produce. So since the flavor itself is not like the most amazing berry in the world, you just pair it with a few other berries that are very, very flavorful and you end up with something that's truly fantastic. Now huckleberry is, in my opinion, one of the best native berries in California. Just absolutely flavorful, delicious. And uh, so being able to add huckleberry to this with the blackberry, with the elderberry, it should produce a really, really tasty jam. And you can see we're running it through the colander here and that's deliberate. Um, even if you just make straight blackberry jam, it's smart to separate some of the juice from some of the fruit. Um, just because if you don't, it just ends up extremely seedy. Um, some seeds, some pulp, that's really nice. It adds a little com complexity to the, um, the texture of the jam, but you don't want it to be so seedy that you're basically just <laughs> picking seeds out of your teeth for hours after you eat a piece of toast or a muffin or whatever with it. So, just trying to get as much of this juice out as we can. And then I will discard some of this pulp. I will say, this creek has a ton of Himalaya blackberry on it, but if we were in a more remote area, there's no way I would just toss these seeds because even though they're cooked and they probably wouldn't survive, you don't want to be introducing a, an invasive species to a, an area where it doesn't belong. But yeah, these banks are absolutely covered with Himalaya blackberry. It's not going anywhere, so I'm not too worried about leaving it here. That fish has jumped there, there, and there. I'm not gonna cook it all though. No, that's good, that's good, that's perfect. That's a lot of huckleberries. I know, that's gotta actually a bit much. Gotta make use of the rest of this. Yeah, that fish is jumping like a son of a gun over there. Beautiful that juice is. Chef. 
Kevon. Smith. Oui, oui. That's really tasty. I don't think I'm supposed to put name brands. I'm not gonna put a name brand, but there's only a few name brands in the world that do pectin. Pectin is basically that the waxy substance on the outside of an apple, and uh, some fruit have more pectin than other fruits. You need to add some pectin to your jam or your jelly, and that's what thickens it up and allows it to be jam or jelly rather than a fruit sauce, which this would be delicious as is over ice cream or something like that, but we want jam or jelly, so it needs to be a little thicker. So we're gonna add some pectin to kind of thick up, thicken up the whole thing. And this brand, which I'm not gonna say who is, I can't talk right now, <laughs> but in the sun too long. This brand comes with a bunch of recipes for different jams and jellies, but depending on the fruit you're using, how much pectin to add, do you need to add citric acid, that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, research it a little bit, find some pectin. The other way you can do it is with gelatin. Um, I don't like that as much. Gelatin just kind of has a weird texture. It's like the, the jelly inside of a jelly donut. It's not exactly my favorite. So I like pectin. A um, little bit tastier way to go, I guess. I, saw, I totally saw that. You hooked the fish. Damn it! Should I go again? Yeah. Oops. Here I am trying to make jam, working for both of us. The woman's fishing. Up to no good. Unbelievable. Alright, so we got the jam to a rolling boil. So that should sterilize it. We're heating up some water now and with this, we are hoping we can sterilize the jars, and then as soon as those are sterilized, we're gonna throw the jam in there, close them on up, and then call it a day. Fuck, it bit it again. All right, so we are sterilizing jars and lids and boiling water. And once we get these sterilized, then the next thing is filling them up with delicious wild jam. Oh, and don't burn this. Definitely on fire right now. <laughs> yeah. In theory. Yep. How full do you go? You want to leave about what I'm leaving. So it's about like half an inch. And that way there's a little bit of room. A little bit extra, it's okay. okay. So, there you have it. <coughs> A little bit of a mess, but not too bad. A bunch of triberry jam, blackberry, huckleberry, and elderberry on a camp stove in a canoe. The lovely lady catching fish the whole time. My phone's dead. No! No Instagram photo! What will we do? Anyway, 
That's cool. I guess what we'll do is we'll go home and make fish dumplings. That's our plan. Wait. I caught so many. I hooked so many. Bye. keep trying. She wants to catch a fish before we go. I think that's a great plan. I'm going to clean up a little bit. I've been standing in this water for a while. Hey, are there leeches in California? Because I'm not joking. When I got in, not here, but earlier, I'm pretty sure I had like seven leeches on my feet. It was pretty gross. They were tiny. They were real, real small. But they sure look like leeches to me. So anyway, now that I've been standing in the water making jam for a half an hour, I guess let's see if I got some leeches. <laughs> yeah, so guys, this is what I'm talking about. Are those leeches? Because they sure look like a bunch of leeches to me, even though they're tiny. Anyway, let me know what you think. No, pick at it and show them. Oh, this is so gross. Yeah, look at those little things. They're moving around, all right. There's just dozens and dozens of these little nasty little bastards. Anyway, I think they probably are. So hopefully they don't carry any diseases. Anyway, that's gross. We're gonna, I'm gonna clean my feet and then we're gonna go do some fishing and have some fun. But anyway, I want to get those things off my feet. <laughs> nice way to unwind, spend a Saturday. Yeah. Good catch, baby. Mm. Cause you hella white. What? <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.